Last review, we talked about Dario Argento's over-the-top masterpiece, Suspiria, and this review, we're talking about a different kind of over-the-top. Uh, it is Lucio Fulci's 1986 foray into erotic thrillers, The Devil's Honey. And it's... It's got a lot of fucking. As you can see, uh, this particular release is, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you've got your nice cover here, which is a little, a little uh, not safe for work. you just got a woman spreading her legs, no big deal, and a dog behind her looking very excited. Uh, inside, simple single disc release, and if you flip this sucker over, a kind of more safe for work cover. Um, both are great. Uh, I'm not even sure which one I prefer, but because it's already bent this way, I'm gonna put it back in like so. Uh, great artwork, um, and pretty much exactly what you need for this type of film. Uh, let's get into the review, shall we? Blanca Marsalek stars as Jessica, a sexually liberated young woman whose boyfriend Johnny, played by the late Stefano Medea, is a saxophone player with a relentless sexual appetite, and oh my god, he is, he is, he's fucking her with a saxophone right now. He is bringing a woman to orgasm with a saxophone. Okay, um, so, this film contains a lot of sex, uh, too much sex. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it out there into the universe, too much sex. Uh, I don't say that a lot in this case. Uh, there's a lot of sex, a lot of it kind of violent, and uh, none of it uh, I can show on this uh, video because of YouTube. So um, for the sake of not getting in trouble there, I am going to take all of the film's more sensual elements and replace them with manatees. So anyway, the film follows Johnny and Jessica as their relationship becomes more and more toxic. Jessica, don't flatter yourself. He's not jealous of you. I'd like you to say you're sorry. Sorry. You don't mean it. You're lying. Culminating in a random and tragic moment that leads Jessica down a dark path, wherein she must confront the truth of her relationship with Johnny. Meanwhile, Dr. Wendell Simpson, played by Brett Halsey, is the kind of Lothario with a freaking car phone and the gall to cheat on his wife, even though she's played by Corinne freaking Clary. I have to operate tomorrow. I need my rest. This fucking guy, man. Anyway, the doc is a real piece of shit who's off having bizarre sexual liaisons of his own, including a scene with a prostitute applying nail polish to her stockings and, well, her vagina. Here played by a manatee. Dr. Simpson is also in the midst of a sort of midlife crisis, I'll file for divorce. which is a big part of the aforementioned tragic event, which leads to Jessica and Dr. Simpson colliding in a monumentally fucked up and spoilery way. Now this was a bit of a blind buy for me. I was listening to Shockwaves and Rebecca McKendry had recommended it uh, in whichever episode that was and had mentioned it several other times and I didn't really remember the specifics, I just remember that she kept mentioning, mentioning it. And uh, so <laughs> I, I went ahead, went to Severn Films when they were having a sale and uh, picked it up. And yeah, lo and behold, solid recommendation. Thanks, Rebecca. While I was certainly expecting more of a horror film with this being a Fulci flick and all, I was pleasantly surprised to find he really nailed the whole serious erotic melodrama tone. Sure, there's some unevenness here and there, and some of the acting is a bit much. But it's a comprehensible story about machismo, emotional abuse, and, well, fucking. Despite it being out of his comfort zone, I mean, beyond being aggressively sleazy, 
The Devil's Honey was arguably Fulci's last great commercially budgeted film, or at least the last one that really seems to have been completed according to his initial vision. And no, I'm not excluding Cat in the Brain. That movie sucks. Image quality is about as good as you'd expect for this kind of niche film. Some of the materials used were obviously not in the best shape, with the image sometimes getting cloudy and a healthy amount of white specks included amongst the consistent thin layer of film grain. Still, when the source is clear, this 1080p scan looks fantastic and is unlikely to ever look much better. Similarly, the audio is uh, vibrant where it counts. Uh, the jazz score really just kicks you right in the ass. It's great, it's really nice to listen to. Uh, dialogue mm, doesn't get off as well. The English track is oftentimes a little bit muffled, uh, nothing too crazy, but it's definitely uh, worn down a bit. Uh, the Italian track is more bombastic, and so if you want to be able to hear all the dialogue really clearly, it will be in Italian, which, um, their subtitles. Special features on this single disc, I don't know why I did that. Special features on this single disc release uh, include a lot of interviews and nary a commentary in sight, unfortunately. Uh, the first featurette is, uh, it's the 17 minute The Devil's Halsey, which is probably my favorite title for one of these interviews ever, in which co-star Brett Halsey discusses his career, his role as Dr. Simpson in Devil's Honey, working with Fulci, and the strange misunderstanding that led to the end of their working relationship. Halsey's easily the most fun interview of the bunch, and it's unfortunate we couldn't get a commentary with him. Next up is a 12-minute interview with the vivacious French actress Corinne Clary, who plays Halsey's wife in the film. She doesn't remember much from the film itself, but we do get a first-hand account of her career. A 13-minute interview with the film's producer gives us our best look into the process that spawned The Devil's Honey and what the film could have been, and a 9-minute interview with the composer gives us lots of insight into his career and why he was chosen for the project. Stephen Thrower on The Devil's Honey features the author of Beyond Terror, the films of Lucio Fulci, discussing the film. Well, by the time The Devil's Honey was made in 1986, Fulci had built a reputation in the early 1980s as a specialist in horror. So, okay, here's a big pet peeve of mine with these uh, special features. Uh, who is shooting them? And why do they choose to just do them in giant, big, echoey rooms? I feel like I see this all the time and there's no reason for it. You have a good enough camera, a cute little lavalier mic, and lighting. Surely you have the ability to shoot somewhere that has good acoustics. I mean, where even is this? Is this his house? Is he glued to the floor? Is Johnny saxophoning his dick mid-interview? I have so many questions about this shitty audio. Anyway, my audiophile gripes aside, this is a solid interview that sheds a lot of light on the background of the film and those involved with it and will definitely leave you with a greater understanding of The Devil's Honey. Fun fact, completely unrelated to this film, Stephen Thrower is also a former member of the band Coil, which uh, you might know as the uh, creators of the original soundtrack uh, for Hellraiser, Clive Barker's fucking great movie. And uh, unfortunately that Soundtrack was deemed not commercial enough for the film, so it was replaced, uh, but it is definitely a soundtrack that is worth checking out. Let's continue talking about this fuck movie. We also get a loving visual essay about Fulci by Troy Howarth, author of Splintered Visions, Lucio Fulci and his films. The essay works as an overview of Fulci's work in eroticism and how this aspect of his career culminates, sorry, culminates with The Devil's Honey, which was a return for the director after his initial battle with hepatitis. There's also an alternate US opening, which features the alternate title Dangerous Obsession, and just jumps right into the sax chasm. Yep, just, just right into it. You also get a trailer, an Italian audio track, and English subtitles. This is not a film for everyone, but if you are a Fulci completist or just a fan of 80s erotica, The Devil's Honey comes highly recommended. I would even go so far as to say it should appease most fans of Italian cinema, although Federico Fellini, this is most certainly not. You think? It's a mean thing you just did. I love you. Now what's the matter with you? Severin has done a very good job with this release. The audiovisual quality is exactly what it needs to be, and the extras, while not exhaustive, are an interesting afternoon diversion, and definitely more than what this film was ever likely to get elsewhere. So, if all that sounds like a good time, head on over to Diabolic DVD or Severin Film's own website and pick up your copy today. Uh, it's, it's pretty dope, uh, if, if, you know, just buy it.
thanks for watching the review. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and just just smash that saxophone into that subscribe button. Just just smash it. Smash that saxophone. If I still had that saxophone, I would I, I would I would have it and I would be like, eh, eh, but I don't. I gave it back. Um, I don't own a saxophone. Uh, follow me on Twitter, where I talk about horror and movies and horror movies. <laughs>